Well, hey there, folks. This is Nick's OS 37. I believe it's 37 degrees Celsius in England today. 100 degrees. That is toasty. It is toasty there. Uh, building your own derivation from upstream sources. This is... We're going to use Olive Video Editor 0.2 as the guinea pig while we do this. So, um, as I mentioned a thousand times in this series already... I use the olive video editor to edit these videos. This is this is where it's at. Blah blah blah. I'll zero dot two coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Hey, have, have you uh have you thanked your loyal listeners? Today? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, yes. I we we had a live stream last night, and some very lovely people showed up and asked questions. Thank you. Nice people. They were nice people. Um. So uh, Olive is an open source, non-linear, Larry, non-linear mm -mm. video editor that sucks a lot less than anything. So. <laughs> Again, their tagline. <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard not to make something. That's, I mean, everything sucks. I okay. mean, it's so hard. It's less sucky than the alternatives. Yes. Okay. Yes. And even to even to some commercials. And it's simple. It's fast. It imports almost anything. It doesn't really care that much if you have different sources with multiple frame rates. It outputs the YouTube really well. Whatever it's, it's it's quite nice, but right now it's in a bit of a transitional state, Larry. The most recent stable release is zero dot one, mm -hmm. but there won't be a zero dot one dot one or a zero dot one dot two, because development on that branch has ceased. Mm -hmm. So you're we're just stuck with zero dot one. Stuck, stuck, stuck not going anywhere. Yep, that's what we got. So the guy who uh, is the main developer is named a guy named Matt KC. Uh, he's also a YouTuber, um, and he does like retro computer stuff. Here's his channel, Matt KC. Um, he started a ground up rewrite of the software a couple years ago that he's calling somewhat unimaginatively 0 0.2. Um, he's been working pretty steadily on it. I get some updates from him on Patreon every so often. Um, it's written in C++. Use the Qt toolkit for its UI, and it is on GitHub. Go take a look at it, even. Oops. Okay, that's fine. I'll be later. So it's there. Um, so uh, I somewhat stupidly created a fork of olive to put my Nix derivations in there, Larry. But Larry, you don't need to do that. No. It's, it's kind of silly. Why would you do it? No. Because really, Nix derivations are meant to live out of tree. They're not meant to live in tree. Like, not inside the. So you're not, I'm trying to package olive better. I'm yeah. trying to give to people. So I actually put my Nix derivations in a. I, I forked the Olive repo and then I made a Nix directory inside and I put the, the Nix files in there. But in reality, all it does is it just turns around and downloads Nix again. Okay. So it's kind of silly. And so my, I haven't, I, I even put it on a branch, even dumber. <laughs> Nix branch. Uh, this is showing people what to do or what not to do. What, well, I'm just, I'm making excuses for, okay. for I, well, this is showing people what not to do. Don't do this. Don't, don't, don't put your Nix there. Whatever you do. Don't put your next don't derivation do in It's silly. It's, it's ridiculous. Olive 0.2 is under super heavy development at the moment. As a matter of fact, the, the current master, you know, the most recent commit on master won't build. Like it's, you know, it's under that kind of development. Um, there's not, there's no alpha release or anything. So I don't think it's really a candidate to go into Nix packages or even the NUR. Do you know what the NUR is like? I do not. It's the Nix user repository. So, mm. so Nix packages is a, is a repository that... Uh, the official repository software. Okay. You know how many packages are in Nix packages right now? Too many. 80,000. That, that's a large number. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And the NUR is kind of a thing. It's like it's like Nix packages, except um, anybody can contribute to it. Nothing's reviewed. You know, it's sure. just kind of the, the Wild West. I don't think this package is is really meant for either one of those things because... The Olive Zero Two doesn't really have any features that I want to want at the moment that are that would help me, you know, better than Zero One. And I'm not trying to package something and then not use it. Some of the features of these next files. Here. So take a look at. It. Okay, so what did I say? Oh yeah, I gotta use an overlay, Larry. Overlay. Overlay. So this is an overlay, and. What it does is 
you know, the, the super open color IO override address thing, what it does is it says, hey, somebody already defined open color IO, but I want to override some of the attributes of that particular expression. So there's this fairly complicated syntax, but it's, it, if you break it down, which I'm not going to hear because I don't remember, <laughs> uh, it's actually not, not so bad. But we, we want to change the version that we get. And we, in order to do that, we just have to override the version, the, the revision, the rev there, it's 2.11, and then we need to override the SHA. And I I did this some time ago, so I think I needed to to change the build, build inputs here. Um, I think I may have just copied them in here uh, and maybe added one or two or removed a couple of them because this new open color IO thing is slightly different. Um, than the one that's in there's there's already one in next packages but it's two zero two dot zero dot two so it wasn't the um all requires two one one or better and, um the reason it's in a separate file and I just I, I thought it was easier to do that than you know I have this default on next which imports that file inside of here and note that uh the way we use it is we pass it as as sort of a uh, an argument to to Im to importing well we're, we're calling next back I guess we're calling next back is here I suppose and we're passing it overlays equal sum list and then um, in, inside of the list we have this import overlay next now note that these parens here these these where it says import overlays on next the only reason they're necessary they, they don't signify anything except grouping the only reason they're necessary is that if they weren't there, uh, we would the 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 list that is is directly outside of that would consider import something. You know, list and nix. The nix language are not uh, list items are not separated by commas. They're just just by white space. So it would consider import one thing and overlays that nix another thing. And so the parens get you around. Uh, this import nix packages thing here that is a channel import. So you must have a channel defined that under that name for that to work. Um, and all out of the box, all Nix installs do, including Nix OS. Um, but if you'll notice here, this like if you're used to Nix OS, this is slightly different because we're not being passed anything here. We're not, we're not um, our expression is not being passed a packages thing or a config thing or lib or any of that stuff. Um, we are defining everything we need inside here. The only thing we actually need is this packages thing by importing next packages, passing this over this thing. And once we do that, we can sort of pivot off of that and, and use some of its attributes. Um, a lot of this is, you know, a lot of this you just have to kind of try out. Um, you know, what, what, what are the attributes package? Well, packages, well, you, you, there, there, is, there is something called the Nix REPL that you can use to, to explore, you know, the attributes of 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 some you know if you import Nix packages and assign that to a value inside of the the Nix REPL thing you can you can sort of you know say packages dot and tab and it'll it'll give you a list of stuff and whatever but more often I find myself just kind of trying things like just okay is, is it is it packages dot lib dot standard and packages standard and whatever it's it's just sometimes it's just faster to just try because it. it's always some combination of of of, of that you know but in any case, we we are not we are not defining an attribute set here like like we normally would inside of um, a, a configuration context. What we're doing is telling it to make a derivation, we're doing that by saying packages standard and make derivation here. And we just use this packages thing to get this fetch from GitHub function and and uh, and and make derivation thing itself and all these other build input packages. So. Just so you know, um, you know, I, I am I am one of these programmers. Um, for programmers, they're they're more used to like imperative languages. Um, that when you see something like this, like I'm used, I, I'm a Python programmer. So if I see something like this, I kind of figured that this is this has side effects. You know, like it does something when it, when it, at parse time it would it would go, um, you know parse that other file and, you know, you know, turn that into part of the AST and, you know, but 
in reality, I'm, and I'm sure this explanation is almost, uh, this explanation is almost certainly wrong on, on, on some axis, but I think it's, it's a good enough way to think about it. I think it's a good enough way to think about it that it'll change the mental model you have of what's happening here. Um, it, the, the import keyword is not really something defined by the Nix language itself. Now, and that's where I, that's where I think I, I, I may actually be wrong about that, but I think it's okay to think of it as not defined by that. Um, I think what happens here, the mental model I'm using anyway, which which may 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 be slightly incorrect, but it's more correct than the Python mindset, is that I think this is parsed in an AST tokenized, and then ultimately Nix packages is responsible for understanding what overlays.nix means. Not not the Nix language. The Nix language itself is super simple. And a lot of the heavy lifting is done by stuff, you know, it's dependence, like, like the Nix packages stuff. Uh, I have a single native build input here, which is CMake. And, and I have some other build inputs here. Now, what's the difference between a native build input and a build input? Well, I think that a native build input uh, has code in it that will only run on certain uh, architectures. So... Uh, if someone tried to build it on another architecture, it might not work. So, you know, I don't know. I, I actually don't know that CMake is one of those things, but I, I, I cargo culted a lot of this. So, I just put it in there. It works. Um, there's another, there's an existing Olive Editor derivation for 0 0.1, 0 0.1.2. Hmm. I think that dot two has been appropriated by next people, but, um, these, these, this has di different native build inputs, 0 0.1, and that's because it uses a different build system. It uses QMake instead of CMake here, so it has to use all this stuff. It has this wrap QT app, so, which I have no idea what it does. But anyway, I narrowed it down to, 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 to it needing CMake, and that was it. I'm not sure if that's a native build input or not. Again, it works. So we have a bunch of build inputs here. LibGL, FFmpeg, QT5. Open image IO, color IO, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I did this a while back and I, I was sort of like, well, I must have cribbed that, most of those things from the yeah, Ozzy 0.1 thing, but it looks like no. It looks like it didn't. <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it shares, I mean, it shares open color IO, but the rest of them are new. And so you might ask yourself, well, how did you figure that out? And, you know, uh, my, 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 my mind is hazy, but the only way I can imagine I figured it out was that I just kept throwing at things. You know, I would go to search.nixos.org and uh, I would search for, you know, I'd have an error and I'd search for the likely package name, like libgl, I'd find it and I'd just stick it in there or ffmpeg or qt5 or whatever. And, you know, just, just throw stuff at it until it worked, and it did. You know, so not that difficult of a, of a thing. So anyway, it's just, it's just a matter of just being tenacious about it, just what you provided as build inputs. Usually, I mean, if it's not totally broken in the first place and it would build on on Ubuntu or something, then it's probably going to build here. So let's see it builds, just for fun. Uh, in order for it to build, we use, you know, the... The default.nix is what this is going to parse when I do this. So nix build looks for default.nix inside of the current directory. And let's, let's go. Okay. Open image and download a bunch of stuff. And you can see that. Wow, that is a lot of core use. So it's building open color out. So this is going to take quite some time. I'm going to I'm going to press pause while this builds, and I'll be back. Well, it indeed finished. Um, and if we ls while while we're in the same directory, this is my home Crescent project projects olive nix directory, which is my fork. Uh, you'll notice that there's a symlink in there now called results. Hmm, what is that? Well, it is a link to a Nix store path. And within Nix store path, if I go to results, there's a bin directory in there. Inside the bin directory is Olive Editor. 
And that is our binary. It built successfully. So um, let's see if we want what happens if we launch it. Olive editor. Well, damn, son. We now have Olive Editor 0 0.2. And let's see. Can I import something? Ah. Yeah. Can I put it on the timeline? Automatically detect. Yes, I can. Look at that. So it appears we have a working piece of software. It's really good. So one thing to consider about this is that our build isn't really that repeatable. Um, I didn't pin Nixpackages packages to any particular Nix package. We use we use a channel import. So every time uh, you know these get resolved, this libgl and fmpig full. Every time we build it again, um, you know use use Nix build again. We might get different versions of those things because they might get updated in the meantime. It depends on what the system I build it on. So it's not really all that repeatable, but we don't really care so much about that right now. Um, and most distributions don't care about that at all. <laughs> uh, but NixOS deeply cares about it, and there are things that we could do to make it more repeatable, but that is that is for another video. So, um, As a matter of fact, the current Olive Editor derivation that's in Nix packages, uh, this one, this is 0 0.1. It doesn't build at all because the, the its dependencies change enough underneath of it where it's doesn't know what to do so um yeah it doesn't work so again i'm really not going to use olive editor anytime soon I'm not, I'm not trying to like i said i'm not trying to borrow trouble by trying to package it for nix packages or the nur or anything and i and i think for people listening to this who who are keen on packaging things um it's the glory is uh is fleeting uh what you want to make sure you package are things that you use yourself because if you don't, uh, it's just kind of pointless. Somebody's you're gonna have to somebody is gonna rot, and then somebody's gonna have to throw it away or take or take it over at some point. So if you don't use it, don't package it. But I, I, given that I'm not gonna use it, you know, and I have this result here. What what? How do I get rid of it? It's in my store. It's not even there's no build you know there's no build artifacts anywhere <laughs> anywhere. Uh, well, what this result thing is is it's, it's a it's a garbage collector root which means that it is the root of some number of, it, it, it's what keeps alive the derivations that I just built. So in order to get rid of it, basically what I would do is just do remove result. All right. Now, when I do that, um, it's still going to be in the store. I just removed the sim link, so that didn't do me any good, did it? Well, it kind of did. The, the second thing I, I need to do is to, is to run Nix collect garbage. And all the stuff that I just built will be deleted from the store because my, my garbage collector is no longer there. So, um, yeah, again, you know, it's not try time to contribute this upstream to next packages or not upstream, but the next packages, um, nor may it ever be, but this is the kind of work you need to do in order to be able to do that. You, you gotta, you gotta hack around with, you know, the inputs and, and, uh, you know, just be tenacious about it. So anyway, I hope that helps somebody and I'll talk to you soon.